Hi, welcome to another Faster Forward live conversation. And with me is Bill Campbell, publisher, author, editor, and all kinds of stuff. And John Jennings, who's an author and an editor and an artist and a professor and God knows what, a curator and all kinds of stuff. <laughs> These guys yeah. kind of do everything. Uh, welcome to the show. Thank you. Well, welcome thank back, you. Bill, and welcome for the first time, John. Oh, Great to have you guys. Yeah. Uh, since we can't do it in person, <laughs> we are virtual. So, um, Bill runs uh, Rosarium Publishing, who has published a lot of stuff by John, yeah. John's done book covers for him. Um, I was curious, um, how long have you two been working together? How did you meet? Oh, man. Actually, uh, thanks to Facebook, uh, because <laughs> thanks to Facebook, I know that we have now known each other for like nine years and like three days. Wow. <laughs> that's, that's <laughs> They're like Facebook nice. memories. I'm like, oh, yeah, wow. I was gonna say it had to be like a decade at least, you know. So, yeah, uh, right we met now. at OnyxCon, we met at OnyxCon yep. back in 2012. Um, mm -hmm. John was doing uh, Black Comics, the um that anthology and i was a uh, pub in coontown yep. so this was uh the year before rosarium even started was that the second? yeah that's right that must have been the second honest con right i don't know that was the first one i was I <laughs> yeah i think it was the second one because the first one i was stuck with stacy on a stage <laughs> <laughs> then that, yeah then i guess it would have been the second one because i didn't because we were in the overflow room i remember that because we were in the overflow room which was the stage in another room <laughs> Nice. Yeah. But yeah, we were just, um, we were like a, it was like a waiting room lobby for like the main auditorium was our mm -hmm. table and we were like across from each other. So yep. we just kind of chatted, chatted when we were yep. bored. Yep. Yeah. And just kind of like shouted across the aisle, you know, at each other. It was cool. Yeah. And, and yeah. Uh, yeah, and that's how we met in, in, yeah. in Atlanta. Cons, man. <laughs> I mean, yeah, that's, that's how it goes. Conventions are, you know, um, I miss them, actually. <laughs> so yeah. That very thing, you know? yeah. That's kind yeah, of a big, big way us nerds make friends. <laughs> yeah. And things and everyone, happen. And things happen. Yeah. Yeah, things cool. happen. So, what was the first book you guys worked on together? Oh. Do you remember? Um, Can you even remember that far back? Was it, I mean, as far as like, you know, because working together is kind of broad for us because we've done Yeah. Yeah, because uh, yeah, I mean, was it the cover for Mothership? Maybe? No. It could have been. Yeah. Um, okay. So, yeah. So, this is really hard because basically, John and I became friends during the whole Mothership process. Mm -hmm. So, John, well, he's still actually still kind of functioned as my therapist. <laughs> 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 Well, because a lot of people were saying yes, and Ed and I, uh, Edward Austin Hall, my co-editor, you know, we were we were relatively unknown, so it was like a very kind of um, nerve-wracking experience, you know. Um, and you know, we already I'd already asked John if he wanted to be involved, so just kind of kept calling him, going like, "This crazy thing happened, and this crazy thing happened," you know. So, yeah, um, so the mothership cover was definitely the first thing, and you know, John was involved with um, the vote for Rosarium as a name. That's right. Uh, yeah, I was curious, where did the name come from? My daughter's name is Rosa. Well, her name is Rosa. Oh, so. oh okay. So I named it after her. Oh, that um, makes sense to me. <laughs> yeah, so then, um, yeah, so, yeah, and then in, like, so that was 2013. And in 2014, because, you know, John and I are always on the road. I mean, we were hanging out, like, oh, my goodness, like, every, like, four to six weeks. Yeah. yeah so, yeah. so somewhere in there was Kid Code. And then I remember in Atlanta... <sighs> Kid Code, um, man, I love that. <laughs> how to get back to it eventually. Yeah, a lot, a yeah, lot of was, us do. Yeah, I know. Like, yeah. <laughs> and then um, somewhere in there in Atlanta, when uh, what was that, the Octavia Butler thing? Like, I took him to to an old bar I used to hang out when I lived down there, and then he was just like, "I'm doing Blue Hand Mojo with you." 
Yeah, was that the barbecue? It was like kind of a barbecue. It was like a divey born. Yeah, it was the uh, <laughs> it was the yacht club. It was right. uh, you, you could have the yacht club. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Blue Hand Mojo. Yeah, he oh, talked man. himself into doing um, Blue Hand Mojo with me, and I just kind of sat there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I kind of just talked myself into to a similar situation because I'm stupid like that. So yeah. yeah. <laughs> anyway, so. Blue, Blue Hand Mojo blew me away when I read it. It was like right in my wheelhouse. It had the supernatural, had the the noir, the hard boiled thing, and oh, man. Thank you. it was like nothing I'd ever read before. And uh, and yeah, there's a cover of it. I mean, look at that cover. <laughs> <Thanks>. <laughs> And that's the way the whole thing looks. It's that John Jennings style. It's it's the, it's it's that look you have that nobody. I, there's nothing else like it. Okay, and thanks. and I mean, what when you were doing this one, John? Mm -hmm. What what came to you first? Was it did you want to do a, a noir kind of thing? Was it the supernatural, sell your soul to the devil, Robert oh, Johnson thing? You know, it's funny because, uh, you know, first of all, like <clears throat> I, I created Blue Hand Mojo because um, I, w I got a chance to pitch. Actually, the, the name of the story was Pitch, actually. <laughs> it was about this character that painted the, sp the spirits of like, you know, of, of you know, basically like, it was about trauma and, and blackness. And, and this character um, could paint the souls of black folk and the canvases and like free their spirits and that kind of thing. Right. And um, I still want to do something with that character, but I got a chance to pitch that to Shadowline, you know, uh, Jim Valentino's company, you know, one of the, he's one of the founders in Empowerance. And he was like, I love this story. I love your art. I love what you're doing. I can't, I can't sell this. You know, I can't, you know, and this is like before like black speckle of culture kind of like broke wide. So it's like right at the cusp, you know, and he's like, yeah, I can't do this. Now, mind you, this is a, a gentleman with, with a black character. You know, Shadowhawk is black, <laughs> but uh, he's like, yeah, I can't, I can't spend 10, 10 grand on this book and print this, you know, so bring me something I can use. Right. And so I was like, okay, well, Jim Valentino said, I'm good at something. So let me see if I can put something together. And I think uh, uh, at the time I was really, I was really interested in like the great migration. And so um, I had just read um, Black Metropolis, which I thought was a phenomenal book. It's by these two black anthropologists who studied, you know, the history of Chicago and the Great Migration. And so I kind of created Frank Johnson to kind of like be a um, an interlocutor for my interest in that, you know, because he migrates up from Chicago. And of course, I grew up in I grew up in Mississippi and around the blues and you know hoodoo talk and all this kind of stuff. And I was also a huge fan of like those like. Um, blues detectives like that, you know, like black detectives who kind of work in a space. But he's so he's kind of like a fusion between like one of those black detectives with like Constantine or like, you know, or like Harry Dresden, that kind of feel. And that's that's essentially where the character came from. And I just kind of started playing around with it. And um, actually, after Kendrick got picked up, um, you know, we had like this kind of no compete clause, which I was still trying to wrap my head around. And at the time, um, what was the name of the company? Boom Studios, but Arkea actually was very interested in it. And I was kind of going back and forth with that. And then, you know, so I had this project and I had a lot of work that I'd done for it. <clears throat> and then, you know, once me and Bill started talking about it, we were like, you know what? This actually would be a great Rosarian book. So that's that's how it worked out, you know. Um, but it started just really as me trying to think about the great, the great migration and using that character as kind of a, you know, a foil or an avatar for that experience. Now, I think the latest thing that you two have been involved in together is that box of bones. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Yeah. That was something that really is a powerful, powerful uh, graphic novel. Thank you. Uh, and um, you, you did the art for a lot of it. You. It was mm -hmm. you and um, Ayizi Jama Everett. Is that how you, yes, right. you pronounce it? Um, kind of worked it together, right? I mean, you yeah. wrote some, they wrote some, both yeah. did art. Um, what was it like to, to, how did you guys like break up the work on it? Uh, that's a good question too. So, because at first, <laughs> <laughs> um, at first, you know, this is the thing. So I was talking to Ayizi, we've been friends for a while, and he, 
and I wanted to work on something together. So I, I you know, I've always have like a, I'm a fountain of ideas, a font of ideas. So, you know, I had, I, I pitched him like five, five stories, right? And uh, of the five ideas, that's the one that stuck out to him that he wanted to kind of like collaborate on. So we just started working on it. And I had also recently talked to my friend, Ronaldo Anderson, who uh, had introduced me to this to this uh, poem called Black Dada Nihilismus by uh, Amiri Baraka. And he was like, yo, this would be a really interesting like way to think about horror. And so as far as like the idea of like just becoming the thing that people name you to be, you know, that kind of thing. So we just started working on the story. And then what happened was Kendrick blew up, I got married. Um, I got back on a, the job market, you know, I had to go through the tenure process again. So a lot of stuff just was crazy. And so I was like, I really love this story. In order for us to really get this done, I got him. We have to figure out a way to turn it to kind of an anthology. And so that's kind of like how that ended up. So then I went through the process of just trying to find artists that I could work with um, that we could pull it together. So it it really was, it, so I really became kind of like developmental editor slash writer slash Art, you know, colorist kind of thing. So that's kind of like the process and how we thought about it. And it, at the end of the day, it worked out. And I ended up using some of the money from my Harvard fellowship to kind of create like a little incubator. And so I was actually able to pay the artists uh, that we work with through through Harvard. Actually, it's crazy. <laughs> so, uh, and, and Bill, what what was it that when you first heard about this, what drew you to this, and made you say, "I got to publish this"? You know, it's it's um. You know, John and I talk a lot. <laughs> so so uh, keeping our conversations straight is just kind of like we, we kind of have like a nine year running conversation, basically. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, That's so, about right. so, yeah, like, I mean, I, I'm trying to even remember where Box of Bones, like when we first started talking about it, like, I, I can't even remember. It was just sort of like, um, our aesthetics are very similar. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I mean, it's not like a perfect circle, but we're we're very similar. So, you know, he'll tell me something and I'll be like, oh, that sounds cool. Um, and then I'll see what happens. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so, I mean, for example, you know, we're, we're getting ready to do this thing, Lion Man, which is a, an old... Um, which is public now, so I guess we can talk about it since yeah. we put it up on the site. So, but you know, we've been talking about that forever, and we've been talking about Box of Bones forever, um, and it just it just sounded like it was in my wheelhouse. You know, um, I, I like the things, no matter who they're from, that you can't see other places, right? Mm-hmm. Like so many other publishers are worried about what's marketable and what's not, and like to me, it's just like that's not my job, even though I mm-hmm. guess technically it is. Um, my job is to to get voices out there that you can't find anywhere else. I think there's a quote from you that about Rosarium saying it's there to introduce the world to itself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was my own. Yeah, since introducing the world to itself since 2013. Yeah. Such a great, so, so a great for me, <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah. I mean, so to me, you know, Box of Bones and a lot of things that John comes up with, I mean, you're just not going to find in many other places. So, you know, in that, in that kind of way, um, you know, we're, we're fellow travelers. Mm-hmm. Yep. <laughs> yeah. I, 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 but that wouldn't really work because, you know, he's got that old kindred thing going. Right. <laughs> but, but um, so, yeah. So, you know, Box of Bones was just right up. But, you know, it's something that I would never come up with. And, like, I know a lot of other people wouldn't come up with. So that's something that I would want to publish. You know what I mean? I like, that's that. like, that's a really good take on, on our history. You know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I can't remember exactly what it was or when it was, as I said, you know. Um, but when it started coming together, and, you know, I love Aize too. Like, you know, mm-hmm. he's cool as hell too. Like, yet again, fellow traveler. So, <laughs> so, so um, you know, his, his stuff for small beer, I love that stuff, you know, that liminal, that liminal series. So, you know, it was just like, oh, I get to work with, with him and I get to work with, you know, uh, tangentially uh, with a bunch of other artists that I really like. That's right. You know, yeah, because we, we have some really talented people on the books, you know. And, yeah. Uh, so, yeah. you know, yeah. it's yeah. like yeah. Yeah. and Brian, and, you know, it's just like sort of like, you know, it's just like, whoa, cool. So it was, it was, it's you, a great project for us. 
Yeah, you guys had mentioned, um, you know, black trauma and, and pain and anger, and that's kind of what Box of Bones is is about, is, is yeah. that stuff, you know, coming to life. Yes. And, you know, most of stories. Just touch that. Yeah. You know. yeah. You know. Yeah, that's what I love about Rosarium. You guys publish stuff that you're not going to find anywhere else. Yeah. Right. yeah. Bill, Bill would have published Pitch. I wouldn't have had to go and create. I'm glad that I created uh, Blue Hand Mojo. But if he had saw Pitch, he was like, oh, yeah, I'll, I'll publish this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm doing this. And you that's know. why, and congratulations, Bill, you won a uh, special Locus Award uh, this year for um, Amplifying Diverse Voices. Yeah, yeah, I saw that. It was. It was cool. <laughs> so I saw that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was cool. Yeah, um, yeah. It was very cool. Yeah, you know, I mean, it wasn't anything I really think that I do. I mean, I guess I do, but it's not. It's not my purpose. So, but um, you know, it's cool. I. I mean, I really appreciate it. I mean, it was cool. I mean, there's a <laughs> lot of things for congratulations. I mean, and also you were talking about mothership, and mm -hmm. the whole thing NPR did with it um, as one of the science fiction things that's that's changed things in the last decade yeah it's like, it's like science fiction's got a new bible huh yeah <laughs> and it was like every revolution has to start somewhere they said right well, right, right now that was pretty awesome actually when that I, was pretty yeah. awesome i was um yet again you know i mean it's it's sort of like um i don't necessarily need to be recognized but it's nice it's really nice yeah. And I think Mother <laughs> may have been what first introduced me to you and Rosarium. That may have been my introduction to the Bill what Campbell was your first book. Oh, well, that explains why that was the first one for me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Mothership was our was our mothership. And then you know no, no, right. took, mothership. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So then it I was. Took, like the stuff that I'd saw published before and then wrapped it into Rosarium since I owned the company. But yeah. uh, Mothership was our first book. So Yeah, know, that was amazing. Yeah. Yeah, thank you, thank you. No, um, yeah, it, it's been kind of um a weird couple of months to like suddenly <laughs> be recognized for all this stuff that you know I've been doing. Um, yeah, it's it's really nice. And you're gonna be teaching. <laughs> I, I don't know what else you're gonna to be say. teaching at Clarion. Yes, I, I guess I, I will be teaching it. Yeah, it's 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 yeah, it's a weird ride. That's wow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and on top that. of that, you've got. You got your own book. Okay, Mike, out. okay, okay. <laughs> the day the clan came to town, which was yes. a Kickstarter, which in the interest of full disclosure, I backed it. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate it. Yes. That I, was, um, my copy should be coming sometime soon. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, the whole the whole uh printing industry has been thrown for a loop with like everything else. So so it was really, it was really interesting because our publisher PM, they emailed us one day and it's just like, oh, the printer doesn't have any paper, so they can't, they can't print the book. What? It, yeah. Oh. Well, I mean, supply chains are messed up in all kinds of industries. Oh, that's true. That's very true. And then, and then the next day he's like, uh, oh, they printed the book. Um, so, so here you go. Um, so it was pretty cool. But yeah, you should be getting it soon. But yeah, no, this is um. Yet again, as I said, it's been a weird couple of months to like suddenly be recognized for the things that you do, <laughs> like, like just out of the blue, like, oh yeah, and here's this thing you did eight years ago. That was great, you know. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, like, like hey, and the day know. the clan came to town is about the clan coming into Carnegie. Which is Carnegie. where you grew up, right, Carnegie? Where you grew up? <laughs> Sorry, it's it's a it's a stick. Like that. I, that no, I appreciate. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, it's um, it, it was just one of those um, a couple of years ago, I was sitting with my brother and we were just talking about the hidden history of Pittsburgh, and he just brought up, you know, this clan right, and I'm like, what the hell are you talking about? Because you know, I grew up there and I never heard this story at all, and the crazy thing about it is that church on the cover is my church. So like they killed a Klansman at like the doorsteps of my church, <laughs> and like nobody ever talked about it. So you're like, whoa. Um, so it was just an idea I just became obsessed with. And then one time I was uh, driving back from TCAF, you know, Toronto, and I had to like drive around Carnegie, like go around, literally go around the town. 
and like the just the story popped into my head so then i just did a bunch of research and i wrote it and you know bijan is a great artist and a great friend yeah. so yeah. i asked him if he wanted to do who i met through john Bijan's awesome. yeah. <laughs> That's and, crazy, um, uh, i think i might have been talking to you when you like around the same time that you were uh you know, thinking about it. <laughs> thinking yeah, about it. <laughs> yeah. It was, yeah, you're all. I mean, you. I have you, a feeling, no matter what it is we talk about here, you guys that were talking about it at some point. More, more likely than not. Yeah. <laughs> more likely than not. Yeah. We talk a lot. Yeah. Um, That's cool. Yeah, but um, yeah. So it was just sort of like this this random thing that just kind of captured my my attention and then you know while we were doing it Bijan said hey why don't we take this to PM Press and I was just like yeah I really like them and wouldn't it be cool to like you know not have to worry about publisher stuff so we just <laughs> we just took it to them and they're like yes thank you and um, I was wondering why it wasn't Rosarium publishing it now that makes some sense it's like I'm writing it, and I don't. That's why I don't have to worry about it. Well, you know, uh, Rosarium was never meant to be like a self-publishing venture. It was yeah. always for other people. So the reason that I had those other books were just because I I'd written them before, and as I said, like I own the company, so I should just you know put them in there. And then you know, anthologies are just anthologies. But Rosarium was always for other people. You know. Yeah. Because, you know, I met folks like John and, you know, and all those other folks. And I was just like, hey, you know, at the time, I mean, they don't they don't need me now. But, <laughs> you know, like, I, was just like, I was just like, you know, these folks need, I guess, uh, their voices amplified. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> kind of so, what, what you do. <laughs> it, it's, I, I, have what you do I have an award for it. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You got an award to prove it. I do. It's, it's actually right on the other side of this computer here. Yes. <laughs> and John, let's talk a little bit about your Octavia Butler stuff because okay. you and uh, Damian Duffy um, have been do you know um, doing the adaptations in graphic novel form of Octavia Butler. You've done uh, Kindred was the first one. Yes. And and and. Um, Parable of the Sowers out now. Yep. And they are like really, really good adaptations of incredible books that cannot have been easy to take books that are as strong and, well, people know them so well, and then to take them and put them into a, another medium like that. Yeah. What, what, what was that like? Um, both, both, do that. Both, both experiences were, were difficult in, in different ways. Kindred, of course, was the was the most difficult <laughs> because it was the first one, and also the subject matter for me. Um, it's about a, a young woman who is pulled back through time into you know from like the nineteen seventies into a slave plantation in Maryland, and then she discovers that you know she's actually related to the uh, the white slave owners in some way, and that she actually has to protect you know one of the uh, you know the, the characters in order for her to survive it's just like what <laughs> so yeah the whole thing is like crazy um yeah i think kendrick was a, was a difficult one because it, there's a lot of uh, things i won't go into editorially about you know what what would happen with it but um at the end of the day you know we actually had far less time to to make the book than we did at first <laughs> and so i think from sketches to finish art i think i only had like maybe eight months to do that book and it was done on paper mm. it's about 750 original drawings which were all like put into the computer um yeah i actually literally like you know messed my my shoulder up working on it <laughs> it was it was it was nightmarish but, but but as you're saying like two one of the hardest things is actually taking one of the greatest you know american writers you know uh, most beloved and and then take her words which are already like really really terse and like precise and then turn that into another medium, you know, uh, it's very daunting. And uh, the other thing too is like, you know, both me and, and Damien are, you know, cis hetero, uh, you know, men, right? But then Damien's also white, right? So that's the other thing where it's like, there's a lot of pressure and judgment coming from folk that, you know, why are we doing this adaptation? So it was coming in from like just the task itself and then like the societal 
you know, kind of like uh, pressure from the industry, you know, kind of thing. Um, but I will say that at, at, the, at the end of it, um, you know, the uh, the state was extremely impressed and pleased with the result. Um, you know, it, it debuted at number one on, on the New York Times bestsellers list, one one Eisner, you know, is now on, I think, yeah. six languages, you know, and uh, has become a perennial favorite of Abrams in general. So, you know, we, we really, really worked very hard and we're trying to be very reverent to the source material. Parable was different because, you know, um, by this time I shifted over to a digital workload. I knew more about what to expect. It's a longer book, more characters. But I found that working digitally, it actually like, you know, it actually helped a great deal. And um, one of the ironies, though, is really funny is that, you know, when I was working on Kindred, I lived on the East Coast. And, you know, a lot of the story takes place on the East Coast. And then when I was working on Parable, I literally moved to like <laughs> the area <laughs> in which the story takes place. That's actually like, because, you know, we're doing Parable of Talents, too. And um, there's a character from Riverside that actually is in, <laughs> that's in the second book. <laughs> It's a little boy actually from Riverside. So it was really odd to me. So, you know, so I could actually study like the, the landscape, actually use color schemes from, mm -hmm. you know, the the area. And I think the thing that was more difficult for Parable wasn't necessarily the act of doing it, but the fact that we were going through these really tumultuous times in America. My wife was pregnant with our first child, Jackson. And so, you know, while he's growing, I'm working on this book and I'm thinking about the world that is being created on CNN on a day to day basis and, you know, the Afro future gestating, <laughs> you know, like right beside me, you know, so it, it was, it was just a very crazy thing. And then to step out of my apartment complex and then be in, you know, parable, <laughs> so it's just, you know, I mean, literally like, you know, fire tornadoes. Oh, that's a thing now. <laughs> yeah. Fire is weather, you know, what they call it? Pyro some, I forgot the name of the fire clouds that just happened. You know, I'm like, what, what is, only mankind would create weather that involves fire. Those fatal thunderclaps that got me a couple of years ago. Yeah. Where, like mm -hmm. I was just like, whoa, I don't I don't even want to know. <laughs> like how people are dying from thunder. I don't even want to know. It's just yeah, really, it's like okay, that's totally scary. I never heard of that. But um that's terrifying. Yeah. Um, yeah, so those are some of the things that happened with those books and, you know, been very blessed. And because of that, that's why how Megascope happened, because I was actually able to, you know, pitch the idea of doing, um, you know, uh, an entire line of books, you know. So are you guys could be doing like kind of like the whole Octavia Butler uh, series I'm of books or you don't know yet? I don't. I don't know yet. I mean, we we are working on talents because the parable books was a two book deal. So now yeah. Damien has adapted the bejesus out of parable of talents. It's very good. <laughs> it's <a huge> <laughs> but he's become extremely good at adaptation. <laughs> it's crazy. And um, yeah, so now I'm working on character designs for that, and then I'll be I'll be drawing that. You know, I'm working on some other stuff now too. But that is my primary art project. You know, for a long form mm -hmm. book. Uh, of course, I'm editing, writing. You know doing little tidbits of things here and there. But um, as far as like other books, I mean, we have actually pitched Wild Seed uh, and we also have pitched oh. Dawn. And it's because they're doing like these TV adaptations and stuff. So of course there's interest, yeah. you know? Yeah, um, I gotta but, tell you, I was a little bit nervous when I got Kindred because that mm -hmm. book kind of changed my brain a little bit. Yeah. yeah. It's one of the books that does that to you. And I was like, oh man, I, I love John, but it's like, is this going to do it? And I'm starting reading it, and I like read it in one sitting. Wow, that's it that's was amazing. it it was it was beautiful. Thank you. Thank uh, the, you. It was uh, it was the wild. characters yeah, was, were were there. Those were those characters. I mean, a lot of that is on Damien too, you know, because it's yeah. like you know, um, he he just he just really put his 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 whole life into those into those adaptations. So. And you can tell, I think he might have read Kindred like maybe 14 times, and, you know, and yeah, and I would actually, I would actually listen to it while I was drawing, like on audiobook while I was making it. So we were like, it was like we were in like time traveling with yeah. him. <laughs> it was like. Yeah. 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 And you guys had worked together before because I know you guys did Kid Code together. Yeah. yeah I mean, Damien and I have been working together like, oh my God, uh, 17 years. 
something like that. You know, we, we, have, wow. we started out as curators and academics and we kind of segued into making comics. Yeah. Yeah. I, I want to say that our, our, our uh, kind of um, the thing that got us into publishing was this book called Black Comics, the first edition, the one that Bill mm -hmm. mentioned when we were at um, OnyxCon. Um, that book is the one that kind of got us, you know, quote unquote, discovered and people started paying attention after that and then kind of segued into making comics. So we'd always been making comics, but just really weird, esoteric, strange comics. <laughs> you know? The whole. You know? Like the, as, yeah, the as whole. opposed to the kind of comics that Rosarium does, you know, as opposed to Kid yeah, Code, you know, Bad Mothers, like, yeah. and, and we that stuff. Yeah. Like Rosarium, you know, uh, folk. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, we've just been doing like just really avant-garde, crazy, you know, things that could only be comics kind of comics, you know? Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. And then we kind of ended up doing the work that we're doing now. So, yeah, we still work on a lot of stuff together. Like, like Bill said, you know, we're working, we're going to be publishing some more things. And then, of course, Stacey Robinson pops up in there with Black Kirby. And so now you know, we work on stuff together, too. And then, of course, now David Brame has become a, a major. Uh, <laughs> uh, yes. um, well, yeah, because both both Bill and I have, have like worked with, with David before. So it's like. <laughs> yes. David's the one that did uh, Bad Mothers. Man, that's another one that just, I started reading it and I go, what, what, yeah, what, 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 <laughs> what, <laughs> what? It was that's just, what comic was supposed to make you feel like. I, it was another one of those things that you do, Bill, which you're reading it and you're going, I've never read anything like this. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm good at that. <laughs> and you also publish stuff that is, that, that is disturbing. I mean, yeah. ink. Ink, I had to stop partway through and kind of catch my breath because that was like so disturbing a book. Oh, I loved Ink. Um, yeah, oh, the, I, I, it's yeah, because Cross did, it, did that, uh, they published it before we did. And mm. when I was reading it, I was just like, man, I really wish I had published this this book because Sabrina's book is just a really powerful thing. So when when the opportunity came, I was just like, this just this book just has to stay in print. Like this book has to, like America just needs to constantly be reminded, which I guess the Klan does too. Um, well, sorry, the day the Klan came to town, <laughs> it does too. It's just like it needs to be reminded constantly that this is this is its face, and it yeah. is just. I, and I, you know, it was a, it was a pleasant surprise because when we came out with it again, it got like a nice fresh, you know, um, more attention was brought to it again uh, when it came out, which was, you know, doesn't often happen when you, you know, especially when a small publisher reprints a book, you know. Yeah. Um, so I was, I was pleasantly surprised, but that book deserves all the kudos in the world. But yeah, yeah I mean, yeah. you know, whether we're just, you know, we're actually trying to kick you in the head to teach you something or just for you to have fun, we just kind of want to just bring you stuff that just, that you just can't get other places. Cause you know, I mean, other people can do what they do, but hopefully that we're the only ones who can do what we do. Yeah, yeah. And I've told you before that Artists Against Police Brutality brought some things that I knew up in my head and made me feel it. Really, really changed me. It's a great book. Yeah. It really is. I mean, it's got it's essays and it's got comics and it's got stories that's all against it is it's artists against police brutality and it makes you you live that part of the black experience. Well, that it, was a tough one. That was a tough one. That had to be. Yeah. That can't have been easy. Yeah, that was that was, and uh, I think I think Jason and I um, we had to take a break from each other after. <laughs> 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 like, it was it was it was it was a really it was a really tough book, but it was well. Yeah, it was really well. Now there's a book you published that I imagine wasn't tough. It might have been a lot of fun to do, which was. Uh, the art book you did on John's art, uh, yeah, that was easy. Rainbow. Yeah, that was easy. yeah, I yeah. bought that as soon as it came out. It, yeah, the, I mean, oh man. The cool thing with the artists who are also graphic designers is that means that I, as publisher, don't really have to do much. <laughs> <laughs> Which yeah. um, is a lot of fun. You're like, oh, here's the book. Uh, here's a typo, and then you just send it off. Like, right. yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, that's a typo. <laughs> It's, it's beautiful. 
Because <laughs> I think the first time I'd seen John's art or met John at all was at the World Fantasy Art Show yeah. that my wife and I ran that 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 you were, and I think we got hold of you and said, "Do you want to be in this?" <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And that was uh, in DC, right? Yeah, yeah, that one, that one, yeah. Fantasy in, yeah. in DC yeah. in 2014. Yeah. And again, your art was like nothing I'd ever seen. Oh, yeah. it, well, thank you. It, 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 one thing I was I want to ask you because I'm curious about this is how did you develop that that style you have? When I first saw it, I thought it was like woodcuts, mm -hmm. prints. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So my my one of my primary mentors was a woodcut artist. His name is Thomas <sighs> Kovacs. Uh, God rest him. He was my uh, he was my my mentor in grad school, and he was from Poland originally. And um, was a uh, uh, you know a graphic designer and uh, you know uh, woodcut artist and he was my my chair you know when I was there, and I just fell in love with like the process. But I just I just didn't have time to actually do a lot of printmaking and woodcut. But I loved the the mark making. So I was, so I tried to figure out ways to mimic that particular style. I call it, and it's long words. I call it virtual xylography. It's, that's the because <laughs> that because xylography is the is the technical term for wood woodcut printing, right? So I was trying basically what I'm trying to do is like when I'm making this stuff is trying to emulate what a print feels like visually, but you know, but doing it virtually. So and that's where that style comes from, and also merging of people different other um, influences. Like I'm a big I'm a big devotee of like Ted McKeever, you know, Dennis Cowan. Um, also, people like Lynn Ward and Franz Masrio, you know, like old school, like printmaking, Kathy Colwitz, of course. So, you know, so my hand is very much like, you know, a lot of fine artists, a lot of people from the Harlem Renaissance. And then like, but, you know, so it's a funky style that comes from, you know, just, you know, cartooning. Like I was I also I had another mentor that was a caricature artist. And so, you know, so there's a lot of caricature, like I have a cartoony style, too, even though it's kind of un, it can be unsettling, but it also is very cartoony. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. That's, that's, that's and I did love in the book the the, the uh, portraits you have of, of all these people and characters, science fiction characters, yep. comic characters and stuff. It's pretty cool. It's thank, good you. Book. thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah, thank you. I really, I'm glad Bill published it. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. I mean, mm -hmm. I wish I could do more art books, but they're 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 really hard. They're, they're hard. They're expensive, and they're yeah. you know yeah. They, you know, I don't know that, that, did they sell that, um, as well? What was that? Do they sell as well as the other stuff? I think if I, I think if I know what I was doing, um, you know, because I mean that was that was sort of one of the interesting things about publishing was it was just sort of like um, you guys decide what kind of publisher we are. Yep. So really cool. Uh, <laughs> um, so that was sort of like the interesting. Thing that 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 was the interesting process, right? Was just sort of having the world decide what Rosarium was, um, because there were some things that just like just just couldn't work. And like I think like Mothership set the tone pretty early. Yeah. Um, so I don't think that that I think it would take like a lot of effort on my part and a lot of new learning for me to be able to do art books. Yeah. Um, yeah. Just because people just don't think of us that way. Yeah. Speaking um, of publishing, um, what's the current atmosphere like as for black independent publishers? <clears throat> I can't imagine it's easy. Well, I, I, I can't, I can't speak for all 5,000 of us, <laughs> 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 but, but, uh, but uh, for me personally, um, yeah, I mean, uh, I just, Okay, so because I believe in science, uh, a couple of, back in the early two, two, 2020, you know, when the, the stuff started hitting in, in Wuhan, I was just like, well, this is going to come here and the next two years are going to suck, you know? And so I just kind of just slowed everything down. Um, that was, that was uh, smart. Well, it was just, you know, I mean, Anyway, yeah, it's a pandemic, you know, uh, there's, yeah. there's not much you can do about it. Um, <clears throat> I know we don't like to think of it. Uh, we don't like to think that way, but, you know, it, it helps. Um, so, you know, we 
we only came out with two things last year and we came out with two things this year. Um, basically what I've just been doing was um, just, you know, settling old debts and, and just kind of gearing up for, uh, what is it, 2022 mm -hmm. and 2023. Um, and then just in the interim, you know, we've just kind of entered into these really interesting partnerships with other 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 companies which i didn't oh. foresee which i didn't foresee you know back in february 2020 but it's been great so you know like we're, we're working with graphic audio who does yeah, the, yeah i saw i saw that uh, yeah yeah so they did blue hand mojo um for, so awesome. <laughs> <laughs> for those who don't know graphic audio does these uh kind of uh movies for your mind uh, audio books with uh, multiple multiple actor casts, sound effects, and uh, music scores and stuff like that. So they started off with Blue Hand, John's Blue Hand Mojo. Um, Coontown Killing Caper came out last month, um, which That's was cool just book. crazy. Um, I had not realized I... Uh, well, okay, I always knew it was crazy, but like hearing it... <laughs> I, was like, I was like, oh, wow. Um, I wrote that. Yeah, kind of. I was like, wow, um, I will never let my kids hear this. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, and then they're doing uh, Lisa Bradley's Exile, and then they're doing Box of Bones. Box of Bones. And, yeah. and, mm -hmm. and hopefully, they'll, we, we've, um, we haven't submitted what's coming up next for them, but they were doing that. And then RB Media. We um, we're talking to them. They they're um, starting off with uh, Maurice Broaddus's. Uh, that's traditional audiobooks. Mm -hmm. So they're starting off with uh, Maurice Broaddus's The Voices of Martyrs, mm -hmm. and then we're going to probably go on for our um, our forthcoming releases from here on out. And then uh, you know, then we're doing uh, what is it? Um, oh my goodness, why am I forgetting their name? Uh, Story Media Group which is our, oh, yeah. our Hollywood agents who have sold Blue Hand Mojo, but I can't tell you to whom, though it's really big. <laughs> Are you talking like a movie movie? Yes, we're talking about a movie. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> but it's really big, and I'm not allowed to talk about it. No, no, of course not. That's but, cool. So, so, yeah, we're kind of moving in like these movie. I think it would be. I, I agree. Think it would be. <laughs> um, yeah, sure you would. Uh, um, question yeah, about so, box. Oh, oh, yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. So, 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 um, you know, just like every, I think with the rest of publishing, I think everything's kind of up in the air, and and just with you know much of life now, like people don't know what's going to happen. Um, but for us, I think it's been kind of interesting because it's kind of opened up a lot more opportunities for us. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, traditional publishing isn't terribly kind to small publishers. So it's really nice to be branching out. Yeah. You know, I'm really proud. Yeah. Different yeah. Ways to, <laughs> yeah. Mm. So it's just been, yeah. So, yeah, it's, it's, it's a weird ride. And then, you know, with all this <laughs> weird attention that we're getting for for you know past tasks <laughs> you know it's, it's hard to say and, and looking to the future i read somewhere that box of bones was going to be a 10 parter is that 10 books or is it 10 of the i don't know what you call it the creatures the thing oh, no, no. it's uh it's 10 <clears throat> it's 10 chapters so so basically you know oh, okay it's five in this one and then we're doing um a follow-up, you know, volume two, which is going to close off that first story arc, you know, for, for Lindsay. And then, you know, <clears throat> figure out what's next for that universe, so to speak, you know. Personally, you know, I'm going to put it out there in the universe right now. I would love to do a Box of Bones, <clears throat> Blue Hand Mojo crossover eventually. <laughs> That's one of the things I would love. Well, maybe that could be the sequel to the movie. <laughs> maybe so. You know, who knows? <laughs> But yeah, um, I was also thinking too. Yeah, so that's that's what we meant by that. That it's um, it was originally conceived as like a ten, like a maxi series, you know, like ten parts. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, and all the art's done for it. We're just you know, you got to do some coloring here or there. It's it's 
you know, we're, we're finishing up the second volume. So a question that came to my mind as a, as an old white guy reading the book is were these the chapters, you know, the suffering, the wretched, the nobody, those, the, the things in it, are those actual pieces of black American folklore or did you guys come up with them? No, they were totally created. It's an, it's an amalgam of, I think, actual fears of people throughout the diaspora kind of mm-hmm. mixed with pop culture. I mean, essentially, they're like demonic minstrels to a certain degree. They're kind of like minstrel characters, right? I mean, that's what oh, okay. Oh, that's why some of them have like bow ties and top hats and, you know, the. the oh, okay. The, okay. Bugs Bunny, the Bugs Bunny gloves, you know, because he's also a minstrel. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, he says well, Bugs Bunny gloves like it's a cute little cartoon thing. Right, right. Uh, no. And so, yeah, so we took like, well, you know, if you look at a character like the Dark who has the, the, the escaped slave mask, but he can Yeah. Yeah. He's essentially like a butler, you know, if he's dressed like a servant, you know, because he, he basically is the lead character of those particular things. But we just basically tried to kind of like create avatars of like different aspects of like black trauma. And you know, not, and we just didn't want to do like Black Werewolf or like Black Frankenstein, you know, which are cool ideas, but you know, are they? We wanted to create something. Not, <laughs> as, not as cool as what you guys came up with. <laughs> well, you know, actually, it's funny because I want to do, I'm doing Loop Guru. I'm doing a Loop Guru in, in the next uh, Blue Hand. Uh-huh. Yeah. But um, so, uh, yeah, so that's what it came from. We just wanted to t- talk about the things that really, really terrify us. I mean, like, for instance, the thing that bothers me the most is like, you know, we didn't really focus on a lot, but it's this thing called the burden. It's essentially like a, 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 a like one of those old cotton sacks that slaves and, and sharecroppers would drag behind them with the cotton in it, except there's like hands and legs coming out of it. And it's like, so it represents like slavery. That's, what it is. Yeah. Yeah, that's my favorite. I, yeah, that, I think, you know, the night doctor. The night doctor. Yeah. Yeah, the night doctor is pretty messed up too. <laughs> yeah. They had a thing that was like the night doctor in Lovecraft country. Uh, with they, with the, the white doctors coming into the black neighborhood to do experiments. Yeah, yeah, that's that's and yeah. that was in Lovecraft Country in the TV show. Right. They had a mm-hmm. thing on that. That's what made me wonder if these were they're informed pieces by of folklore that I just wasn't aware of. They're informed by, by history, but they are they they're mixed up with like our own wild machinations. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Um <laughs> Yeah, it's funny because how they would come come to be like, you know, like the nobody, for instance, and we got the name from that song. You're like, nobody knows the trouble I've seen, mm-hmm. which is like why the first episode is called, you know, the troubles I've seen. Because and it's also about a, bl- a blind, you know, blues singer. But in the middle of creating that, Yeezy was like, you know what? The nobody should breathe fire. And I'm like, yeah, <laughs> yeah I can do that. <laughs> It was like that. I was like, yeah, he should. It should. I don't know why it would, but yeah, it's like a dragon. Yeah, cool. You know, and it's like a demonic bobblehead. It's like, yeah, it's just like really disturbing imagery, you know. And it, and we wanted to make something that was like nothing like any other thing that people would have thought of. The other thing is that I wanted to make them all have very very specific uh, silhouettes. You know, I was thinking about Carol, Carol Walker's work, you know, and how terrifying it is just with shadows. And so, like, okay, well, if you see the nobody. And and you just see it as a silhouette. You know what monster app is coming after you. <laughs> you know, so yeah, yeah, Bill. That must have been something to read those when <laughs> when they sent them to you. Well, as I said, you know, I mean, it's sort of like, yeah, I mean. <laughs> well, oh look, I got something. Some I got something with. from John and Damien. Isn't that nice? <laughs> We're in very similar wavelengths, so it's sort of like, oh yeah. Of course, it would be like this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, it was sort of like when you see the um, the the burden. I'm like, yep. Yeah, the burden. Yeah, the the wretched is and the wretched. That totally makes sense. That totally makes sense. So the wretched, yeah. Like the wretched is like a sentient lynching tree, which is like probably the most horrific thing. You know. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, I, I, that was a book I didn't read all the way through in one sitting, because I tend to read when I go to bed. So I didn't want to read too much of that. You don't want to read my brain. Night. I think it's. I think like instead of horror, I feel like more like affection. I guess so. <laughs> so like you guys might be like ah, and I'm like oh. Aww. Aww. <laughs> <laughs> totally, you get me. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Yeah. So you know, I mean, yeah. 
The second, <laughs> half, the second half is gonna be is gonna be pretty awesome. Uh, David Brain threw, drew like the last three chapters of it, so we'll, I'm looking mm -hmm. forward. That's gonna be really cool to, to finish yeah. coloring. And then, I can't uh, wait to see that. Yeah, that's some yeah. Really that awesome. was another cool thing about it is the different chapters were there were you know different writers and different artists, so that it all kind of it all fit together, but each chapter had its own feel. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And What's really cool about it cool. is like in the second half, like, you know, at first Lindsay Ford is the, she's like the kind of like uh, interlocutor or like the, you know, she's basically like telling the story, you know, to a certain degree, because it's all about her research, right? But then there's gonna be a certain point in the story where she becomes the center of the story. And that's why we actually had like the same artist for the last three chapters, because then it doesn't shift anymore because it's all about her and her decisions from that point on, so. Now, I, I imagine that the very beginning of the book is informed a good bit by your life in academia. Yes, actually, actually, Lee Rayford, Lee Rayford, who's in that story, is actually a friend of ours from Berkeley. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, it's funny because it's kind of a shout out to how we me, I met Ayize because we met actually at her house over dinner. <laughs> so, yeah. Cool, cool. Um, we're pretty much out of time or a little overtime oh, okay. which doesn't surprise me when i'm talking to you guys because we could talk so like much three hours man <laughs> i know, I know. <laughs> and i'd be thrilled <laughs> but we need to stop at some point um i want to thank you guys for taking time to talk to me this has been this has been great and hopefully we'll be able to do this at a convention Perfect. sometime an actual real people and i'll buy you guys a drink at a bar or something Oh, my pleasure. It's always fun hanging out with you, Mike. Yeah. And um, I want to remind people to that we're going to be putting links in the comments on the YouTube thing to their social media, um, to their website, so you guys can glom on to them all you want. And please remember to subscribe and like. Click the bell on YouTube so you find out about new Fast Forward stuff going on because it helps us. And uh, thanks, guys. Oh, Appreciate yeah. it. It's a great pleasure. And from all of us at Fast Forward, take care. Get vaccinated, damn it. <laughs> Bye -bye. Please.